This section of notes for packet 2.4 is going to talk about the relationships you saw in the labs between pressure, volume, temperature, and the number of particles. And it's also going to go through how to do some calculations involving these relationships. So the first thing you have to understand is the definition of pressure. So pressure is defined as the frequency of the collisions between particles themselves or the wall of the container. When you're talking about frequency, you're talking about the number. So the more collisions you have, the more pressure you're going to have inside the container. In the PVTN lab, you looked at three relationships. You looked at the relationship between volume and pressure, the number of particles and pressure, and temperature and pressure. What you should have seen with the volume and pressure is what's known as an inverse relationship. So as the volume increases, your pressure is going to decrease. That's because you have more space, which allows for less collisions and therefore less pressure. In part two of the lab, we looked at what happened when you changed the number of particles and what you should have seen is that they had a direct relationship as the number increased then the pressure also increased and that's because if you have more particles you're going to have more collisions occurring and therefore more pressure. In the lab with temperature versus pressure you were recording the temperature in degrees Celsius and what you should have seen was that it too had a direct relationship. So as your temperature increased, the pressure increased. And that's because the particles are moving faster, therefore they're going to collide faster. But one thing, if you look at the graph here on the left for the temperature in degrees Celsius, it actually doesn't go through the origin. So that when temperature is zero, zero degrees Celsius, you still have pressure. And the reason is because the particles are still moving inside of a solid. So therefore you're going to have pressure. As long as particles are moving and can collide, then you're going to have at least some pressure. It is not until we get down to absolute zero, which on the Celsius is negative 273 degrees Celsius, that you have zero pressure. Because that's a point where particles stop moving and therefore you have zero pressure now. So when we're talking about temperature, in the relationship, we're talking about temperature on the Kelvin scale in pressure. So when you're working with the relationship between temperature and pressure, you have to convert to Kelvin. Because at zero degrees Kelvin, you have zero pressure. The next set of notes is going to go through how to do some actual math calculations involving PVTN problems. You have to know those relationships shown in the graphs in order to be successful on these problems. The first thing you will be setting up is what's known as a PVTN analysis table. This is where you're going to gather all of your information that is given to you in the problem and will help you to figure out how to go about solving the problem for the unknown variable. So let's look at some examples. In order to work these problems, you will need to have your reference table with you. Specifically, we will be working with table A. So not always will you be given all the values for temperature and pressure. Sometimes the problem will say at standard temperature, at standard pressure, or this is also known as STP. So if you see those words within the problem, you're not going to be given all of the values that you need to complete that PVTN table, but you will have to get some of the values from table A. 
All right, let's look at an example of how to solve a PVTN problem. So the first thing you have to do is draw your IFV chart. Hey, so now it's, it says a sample of gas at a pressure of 0 0.556 atm, so that's my initial pressure in a temperature of 20 degrees. It's there at 20 degrees Celsius, so we have to convert it to Kelvin. Right? So the first thing we're going to do is use the formula on the back of the reference table, and you're going to see that Kelvin is equal to 20 degrees Celsius plus 273 to give me 293 Kelvin. That's going to be my initial temperature. And it says it has a volume of 12.9 liters. So that's my initial volume. All right. It says the gas is allowed to expand at constant temperature. So that means temperature is going to have no effect in the problem. To a volume of 22.3. So that's my final volume. And it says what will the pressure be? So final pressure is what we're trying to find. So now the important thing here is this effect column. This will tell you how to set up the problem. So I'm going to look at my volume. Initially to final, my volume is increasing. So I'm going to draw an up arrow to show that it's increasing. If my volume is increasing, this is where you need to have the relationship from pressure. So volume increases and my pressure increases. So I'm going to come over here my pressure decreases because it's an inverse relationship. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to draw a down arrow for my pressure. And I'm going to put a little V there to know that volume is causing that to go down. So I have all the given information established. So the next thing you have to do is setting up the calculation. So when you're setting up the calculation, you want to start with what's given to you. So initially what's given to me is the pressure, and that's what we're trying to find. So I'm going to put my initial pressure with its units, and I'm going to multiply that by my initial and final velocity volumes. Since I want my pressure to go down, I need to put the smaller volume on top over the larger one because I need a number smaller than 1 when I'm multiplying here in order for this to go down. So if my final effect is a decrease, then I have to put the smaller number on top. And now I'm simply going to multiply 0.556 times 12.9 and divide that by 22.3. If you did that rounded to the correct sigs, we would have 0 0.316 ATMs. All right, let's look at this second example. So it's saying a 600 centimeter cube sample of gas in a glass flask is at standard temperature in 108.2 kPa's of pressure. What temperature would be needed to return the gas to standard pressure? So I'm going to set up my IFE chart. Okay, so I've got my pressure, my volume, my temperature, and then my number of particles. So if I read it, 600 centimeters cubed. That's my initial volume. Oh, there's that tricky word, that standard temperature. That means I have to go to table A. So if I look at table A, I see that the standard temperature is 273 Kelvin. So that's where I'm starting initially. And it's 108.2 kPa's, which is my volume. It says what temperature would be needed, so my final, we're looking for the temperature, to return the gas to standard pressure. So standard pressure, again, 
we have to go to table A to look up standard pressure. So this unit was originally given to me KPA. So I have to use the standard pressure, which is also KPAs. So the final, if we're returning it to standard pressure, it's 101.3 kPa. So there is no change in volume. So volume we don't have to worry about in this problem. So let's look at what's happening. Initially to my final pressure, pressure is going down. That means that my temperature has to go down because temperature has a direct relationship with pressure. So if I, if I increase my temperature, my pressure is going to increase or vice versa. So in this case, my pressure was going down, so my temperature is going to do the same thing. So now I have my IFB chart set up, and it's a matter of setting up the problem to solve for temperature. So since we're trying to solve for temperature, temperature is already in Kelvin, so we don't need to make a change. We're going to start with the given temperature, and then we're going to multiply it by the conversion factor between your pressure. So since I need my temperature to go down, I'm going to put the lower pressure on top, and then the larger one on the bottom. My units for pressure are going to cancel out. So to solve this, I would take 273 times 101.3 divided by 108.2, which would give me a value of 256 Kelvin. Okay, so now take the moment and try the practice problems in your packet on your own. If you have trouble, please let me know, but at least be, try to set up the IFE chart, and then from there we can look at what, make sure you have all the units correct.